Welcome back. As the coronavirus is on top of people's minds right now, we have invited Dr. Anuj Malik from Ascension St. John Hospital to answer some of our questions about COVID-19. He's an infectious disease specialist at the hospital there. Good morning and thank you for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So first of all, yesterday, uh, President Donald Trump declared a national emergency. What does this mean for citizens and health professionals as yourself? Yeah, so, you know, primarily the meaning is to um, release more federal funds for uh, the management of this outbreak, about $50 billion, my understanding is. And uh, so the idea will be basically that it'll give us more resources, but it doesn't mean that there's something to worry about necessarily. It's not that the epidemic has taken off much more, it's just that we have more funds and more resources. All right, and one of uh, the things that to me is kind of interesting is this panic buying that we're seeing. People are, fly are going to the stores and things are flying off the shelves. These are basic necessities that we need, toilet paper, hand soap. Why is this happening? I think it's worry and anxiety, and I think uh, um, as uh, the media, I think we have the responsibility to communicate effectively. I think that there is not uh, so much of a concern that we're going to have a complete shutdown in society. We're just going to try and limit uh, certain large congregations, but when you're going to the store, when you're going to... Uh, when you go into a restaurant, the risk is extremely, extremely vanishingly small. Uh, at the same time, we have to continue to take precautions. So I think it's fear. Some of it is understandable. Our responsibility is to communicate, uh, res you know, communicate in a responsible, consistent fashion so that people are not so worried, but still take the appropriate precautions. All right, so there are reasons not to panic. There are absolutely reasons not to panic. All right, and also as spring break starts for many families, you know, should people be worried about flying? I know I was planning to go somewhere next week, but now I'm not sure with this happening. Yeah, I know a lot of people have asked me that personally as well. So what I would say is if you're young and healthy, and you don't have any major medical conditions, I would say that it's fairly safe to travel. Airplanes themselves actually circulate the air every two to three minutes, so it's very hard to get an infection on the plane unless you're sitting next to somebody who's got the coronavirus, which is unlikely. Uh, the other thing I will say is if you're elderly, if you, are, if you have chronic medical conditions, heart failure and so on, you know, kidney problems, then it is judicious to avoid traveling and avoid travel to places that are high risk. You know, n nobody's going to go to China at this point, for example. Right. So, you know, high-risk um, uh, places, you avoid those. All the information is available on cdc.gov. Mm -hmm. uh, very helpful site uh, right on top is COVID-19. Follow that instruction. When you travel, wash hands and face regularly with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Cover your face with a mask and uh, try to maintain about three to six feet distance from people. And that's about it. All right, and we have heard a lot about limiting person-to-person -person contact. What is social distancing, distancing all about? Yeah, so social distancing, the idea is that uh, when done on an individual level, it's trying to stay about six feet away from individuals, cover your cough and sneeze, that kind of thing. Uh, when you're talking about uh, community-wide social distancing, you're really talking about, you know, limiting the number of gatherings in which a large number of people get together. For example, sporting events, uh, for example, you know, schools and, and colleges and so forth. And we have seen many of these cancellations. Right. Any final thoughts, doctor? Well, you know, so first thing I'd like to say to the public is uh, there is no need to panic. It's not that we have large scale community wide transmission. We have some. We're monitoring it carefully. The, the, the feds are involved. CDC is involved. And follow the basic precautions that we talked about. Wash hands and uh, face with uh, water, regular, uh, water and soap. Um, maintain about six feet of distance from people. Um, and wear a mask when out in public. And if you're ill, um, stay at home. Call your doctor's office for more advice or call the urgent care. And then finally, I would say is, um, you know, in terms of uh, the, the disease itself, 80% of the infections are mild. 20% are, are severe, and of those 20%, you know, the death rate so far that we know from the 70,000 um, patient study in China is only 1 to 3%, not, I'm not going to say only, but it's 1 to 3%, mm -hmm. happens primarily in elderly people and people with chronic medical conditions. So far, no kids, no pregnant women that we know of in the small studies that have been published have been affected. All right, thank you so much for being with us for this and sharing this important information right now. Well, uh, we do uh, have all this information on our website, of course, kjrh.com. And if you haven't downloaded our Two Works For You app, you can find all that information. We continue to track the coronavirus here in the state.